Dan Perry here, and here is episode or part 33 of our TCPIP basics. In this episode, we're going to look at the ping utility. And so in this one, we'll introduce you to the ping utility, de demonstrate its use. And what is ping? Well, ping is an echo request system that lets, uh, lets us try to find out if other machines are active on the Internet or on our network. It stands for Packet Internet Groper. Well, originally, my understanding, ping just had the name because of in sonar, when you send out a ping and then get an echo back to tell how far away a system is. And then somebody said, well, it's got to have a name, and they came up with Packet Internet Groper. So it, you, it, it's a utility that's very handy for testing your network connectivity. <clears throat> it's a command line utility. There are some graphical wrappers you can get that will... Uh, let you run ping in a graphical environment but it's a command line utility that comes with all of your operating systems. Ping uses the ICMP echo request protocol in order to send out its echo request and get the response. Now today a lot of operating systems disable that response so if you ping those machines that have that disabled you won't get a response even though those machines are online and alive. Windows 7 turns it off by default. The Windows 2008 server leaves it on. Also, you have some of your uh, routers and firewalls will block those requests. And if your router or firewall blocks those requests, you won't be able to get any responses. Uh, the basic syntax of the ping is ping and then some options and the host you want to ping. The options are a little bit different in different operating systems, so Linux and Unix are a little bit different than the Microsoft ones. The Microsoft version, by default, sends out four pings, so it will send out four echoes or pings, and then stop. Linux systems will ping continuously until you do a control C or a control break. You can use the slash question mark to get the help on the ping command. Now, so in Windows, some of the more used options, uh, most of the time you don't use any of the options, but when you're using them, if you want more or less than the four requests, you can do the slash n followed by a number, and that will change. And so if you wanted 100 pings, dash n space 100. By default, it times out in one second. But if you wanted to run longer than the one second, you can change, or shorter than the one second on that timeout, you can change that by putting in the slash W, or dash W rather, and then a value of, say, 5 for 5 milliseconds. That's probably too short. 500 milliseconds, or 500, would be half of a second. Um, and you can adjust that. The dash I will change the time to live. If you don't remember what time to live is, you can go back and look at our video on the uh, network layer, and it will, do, it will explain time to live for, for you. And the dash L will change the size of the packet or the buffer. So those are some of the common... Uh, switches and, and options that you might use. Again, most of the time, all you're going to do is type ping and then the host that you want to ping. Now, you can ping either by domain name or, or in host name or by IP address. Okay, now let's look at some basic pings and how we'd use it. So we would type ping and then we could type an IP address of a device we want to ping. I'm going to ping my router here uh, in my office, and so when I type the IP address of it, I get my reply, uh, replies. So it sent out the four requests, <clears throat> and so it got a reply from that router each time. It sent 32 bytes and received 32 bytes back. It took two milliseconds for the response each time, and the time to live was 64. So that router started, in this case, with a time to live of 64. I know that because I know that there's no devices in between my router and my machine. 
So that would be the results of a basic ping. Now let me ping a host name. So I can ping, say, danhperry.com. So in instead of pinging the by IP address, I can ping by host name. And when I run it, now I'm getting my response from it. And I get to see what the IP address is of danhperry.com. It's the 184.173.215.91. I sent 32 bytes. The first one th took 37 milliseconds, the next two th 41, and the last one 35. So that's pretty good. The time to live here is 50. If I assume the danhperry.com server started with a time to live of 15, I'm sorry, not 15, of 64, it took 14 routers or went through 14 routers to get back to this location. Now, if I do a ping and I do a slash question mark, I'll get the help. So that's that help I talked about, and you can see the different options. So if I did dash, dash in, uh, let's do six, and let's do danhperry.com. This time, it's going to ping six times, and then it stops. Okay, and at the end on all of these, it gives you a summary of what happened and if we got responses in the average time. Now, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to ping northeaststate.edu, and I'm going to get a request timeout. Now, it comes back and tells me what the IP address is, but I, each time, each of the four attempts, I get a request timeout. The reason is that, and I happen to know this, the router at Northeast State blocks all ICMP ping requests, so it will never respond, even though I know that website is up and running. So you might end up without a response for a host that actually is out there and does exist. Next time we're going to look at the traceroute command.